everybody welcome to the gym masters show it's so good to have you here we're live we're in our lovely hall studio and it's so nice to see all your smiley faces hope you guys are doing well hope you're having a good day and if you're not having a good day you know this is the place to come to be entertained of course we have our poignant moments we have lots of surprises and we have lots of laughs too as well and that's what we've been doing with this show as we're approaching almost 900 episodes which is very hard to believe in just a short period of time but with all of you watching and supporting and celebrating commenting and doing all the rest that you do i know you guys like to share the links on your social media and everything else it has truly been a blessing and a joy for me to uh, pop into this host chair every single day as often as we can. The TV work and radio work has been extra extraordinarily busy. I know you guys have been following. We literally just got in from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Last night, New York City, I was on a TV shoot. Texas, California, Nevada. You guys have been following along. We were at that horse farm and riding horses in Nevada and Urington is our south, I don't have south of Reno. It was spectacular, really cool stuff. But of course, we are here to uh, connect with all of you, our lovely squad. They're commenting already, and we love that. Hey, gang, if you would like to comment during the show while the show is live, you can certainly do that right now in our JMS Lovety chat room. We've got a lovely chat room set up just for all of you. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, we can see hundreds of episodes of our series. You can comment right now. It's a gift to the subscribers. You can comment. You can say hi to each other. You can show baby pictures. You can exchange recipes, whatever you guys like to do. You guys like to coordinate with each other, which I think is really nice. New friendships made all the time. And even I and our guests will see some of those comments and maybe we'll sprinkle a couple on the screen as well. Don't forget, you can also do super chat, super emoji, super stickers. That's something you do in live chat that helps support our series. But how the heck are you? I hope you guys are doing well. It's so nice to have you here. And we've got our international audience of loveties who are watching literally from all around the world. And again, we really love all of you. and We appreciate you being here with us. We've got a very special guest and then a surprise guest is going to join us as well. So yeah, stick with us. You know, our very special guest from a lot of film work, television work, and even a prolific voice artist. Yes, Jenny Kwan is here coming to us uh, live and direct from Los Angeles, California. We're very excited to have her here on the show. She's part of a very exciting project we're going to tell you about. Matter of fact, she's got a lot of things going on. She has, ever since she entered the business at age 11, performed in her first semi-professional gig with the performing troupe Kids of the Century, and then on a flight home from New York City, after performing with the troupe, Jenny was discovered by an L.A.-based talent agent. At 18, she landed the role of Kim in the first national Broadway tour of Miss Saigon. Yeah, after producer Macintosh conducted a worldwide search to cast the role, this launched her career into musical theater. That's right. Her extensive musical theater credits include Kim and Miss Saigon, which is fantastic. Of course, the uh, Broadway national tour of Avenue Q which is terrific. The original cast of Bear, as Diane Lee directed, and um, many, many more. Land of Smiles, incredible background that she has, gang. And you guys probably know all this as well. She also has starred in select regional theater productions, including Blood Wedding and uh, Tea, the musical, Faces of America, and Jasmine and Disney's musical Spectacular Aladdin. Jenny also has an array of credits in the television world. Yeah, I love the television world. She was uh, introduced to television as the series regular Samantha Wu on California Dreams, which aired on NBC for five years before moving into syndication for several more. Some of uh, Jenny's other television credits include New Girl, Anger Management, opposite Charlie Sheen, Beverly Hills 90210, The Nanny, opposite Fran Drescher, Family Matters, Oliver Stone's miniseries Wild Palms, and more. She's also worked in the film world. Credits include Entourage, Promoted, Trojan War, film shorts of many, many, Playtime and Invasion of the Money Snatchers, and lots more. Also, Fear of Punk Planet, created uh, by Joe Escalante of the Vandals for Digital Entertainment Network. She's also lent her voice in the world of animation. Fans around the world recognize her voice as Suki on Nickelodeon's hit animated series, Avatar, 
The Last Airbender, as well as lots of video games for the series, too. And um, she played Bit Girl in the animated pilot, Dr. D and Bit Boy, also voiced characters and performed motion capture movement for the video game True Crime Hong Kong. She also has heard in a wide range of voice acting projects, including Eureka 7, Blaze Blue, and uh, Twinkle Toes, When They Cry, and on and on and on. And guess what, too? She was also a member of Hollywood Records' girl pop band, Nobody's Angel, with recording their sophomore album, a development deal with ABC Family, and touring under their flashy belts. The band received a gold record for recording two songs on the Princess Diaries soundtrack. Today, she continues to collaborate on different musical ventures and is a recurring member of the high-energy kids' pop band Twinkle Time and Priscilla Poodle. And in Los Angeles, of course, she continues to live the dream with her quirky Brussels, Griffin Calvin, along with her awesome husband, Matt, continues to work in the industry. Uh, she's very prolific. She's really great at what she does. And there are some photos, <laughs> gang, that will bring back some memories for you. This is from California Dreams, of course, on NBC. It's just some of the many projects she's been a part of. And we mentioned Miss Saigon, which is really something very special for Jenny. 90210 and The Nanny with Frank Drescher, as I mentioned. Avenue Q, which is a spectacular one. Yeah, that was great too. Also, you know, Worst Cooks in America. Did you know she was on that as well? Yeah. And of course, there is the Avatar. We're talking Suki. Yes, everybody loves that. And even Anger Management, as I mentioned, and uh, this is exciting. Street Fighter VI, we're going to talk about that coming up as well. And Around the Sun Season 2. Yes, you know, we talked about uh, Season 1 here on the show, and she is surrounded by some epic talent. Um, so we're going to talk about that and lots more, but, uh, it is my pleasure, uh, live and direct from, uh, Los Angeles, California to welcome Jenny to the gym master show for the first time, but definitely not for the last <laughs> Jenny, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Hi, Jim. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me, man. When you were just going through that list, I was like, wait a minute. Did I do all of that? Yeah, it's amazing <laughs> it's, when you hear it back, isn't it? A little bit. It had a little tear in my eye. I'm like, <laughs> how is that possible? I don't even know. But That's it. You did it. I mean, you. And it goes back to like 11 years old. Tell us yes. about that. What were some of the inspirations like in your life and your family that pointed you in the direction of wanting to get into entertainment and performance in the arts, Jenny? Well, Jim, I will tell you, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but my close friends and family know this. I was an extremely, extremely shy child. L literally, there are pictures of me hiding behind my mom. You know, I, I, I literally would never talk. Uh, when I started singing lessons, I probably was the most boring child to teach because <laughs> I would never open my mouth. And if I was doing scales, that's when I would open my mouth and then I would just shut up again. Um, <laughs> but coming from a very, culturally I'm Filipino. I, I wanna say culturally, there's a lot of music surrounding Filipinos. We love oh, yeah. karaoke and all that kind of, of entertainment. There's, I mean, I sound like I'm generalizing, but there are a lot of talented musicians in, in the culture. And um, my mom, wanted me to get into the singing and the acting. She actually told me a story. She said, I prayed to God that you would be either a nun. And as an adult, I was like, oh, that's not happening. Or an actress. So the second came true. <laughs> uh, but again, I was so shy. But when I started performing, that gave me the outlet to just express myself, even though in real life, I I was still quiet, but when I would be on stage, that's when I would really open up and just have an outlet to express whatever I was singing or acting or portraying. And that's how I got started. And I, the story about being discovered on a plane was true. I literally, it looked like a movie. I was the child who was sleeping and drooling on her shoulder. And my sister was my ch chaperone. And she said, Jennifer, wake up, go meet this agent. And I was like, I didn't care. I was like, oh, oh, I don't care. So I walked down the aisle and I remember 
the agent was towards the front of the plane and it looked like a circus, like the kids were juggling and people were singing and dancing in the aisles. And I walk up and she's like, oh, hi, Jenny, do you, do you like acting? And I just shrugged my shoulders and she said, oh, would you like to try it? And I just shrugged my shoulders and she said, if you came back to LA, would you like to come meet me in my office? I shrugged wow. my shoulders. And yeah. she said, if you go to an acting class, then will you come to a meeting? And that's kind of what excited me. I said, okay. So literally, that's how I got started in the Isn't business. Isn't it incredible? Yeah. I mean, and again, at that, at that young age. I was so young. I was a young 11. Yeah. <laughs> Very. I was not a showbiz kid, even right. though yeah. Yeah. not at all. No. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, did you, I mean, did you? sing and dance did you entertain around the house were you always were you funny were you always very <laughs> quiet and reserved and to yourself did that have to sort of develop and as uh you know you became a seasoned veteran that sort of came out a little bit my sister would say that i was always singing and annoying her sure <laughs> but i think that getting into class again and learning how to develop these skills started to bring me out of my shell. But even as I was still in Kids of the Century when I was performing, I was the one in the back just, you know, as part of the ensemble. And when I would get solos, I would do it. But I was, you know, acting really helped me become a lot more expressive and allowed myself to come out into the light a little bit more. You know, a lot of people yeah. uh, that I chat with say that. Yeah. Whether that they're comedians, actors, actresses, yeah. uh, performers of all types. A lot are shy. And when they're off stage or off set, they go home and, and they go back to their everyday lives. Sure. And then when they're doing their thing, boom, that's the other side that comes out, which is kind of cool. You know, and I think so that's it's a natural to, thing. You it's know? a natural thing. Right. Exactly. It helps them mm -hmm. express. Um, you know, I mentioned this is really a spectacular opportunity, oh, Miss Saigon. How did you. that happen? I mean, uh, Jim, what a we, dream that was, huh? Exactly. So, and literally, I just was going to post something the other day. It is a 30 year anniversary, which ages me because I'm still 18. You know, <laughs> you're still 18. I'm that's still right. 17 today. But yeah, that's uh, right. And I'm 22. Exactly. That's yeah. right, Jim. Um, mm -hmm. So, that also was a dream come true. And it's very interesting. I, one of my childhood friends who, um, she's the one who actually told me about the show. I had no idea that the show existed. And she said, Jen, you have to audition for the show. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I listened to the music and I was like, oh my gosh. And so literally maybe like a few weeks later, there was an open call uh, back when, you know, there were lots of open calls that you would go to um, at the there's a, a very, very famous church on um, Franklin and Highland Boulevard in Hollywood. And so, again, I was still really shy at 18, but I show up to this open call. My manager comes with me. I'm just basically to myself. It, I felt like I was in my own little bubble. There must have been, gosh, I'm trying to remember, two, 300 people there, um, and many of them for the role of Kim, many of them. And uh, I go in, I don't even remember going in the room, but I go in, I sing my song. Literally, maybe a couple weeks later, my manager tells me, well, they want to fly you to New York for a callback. Now this, Jim, is it's so embarrassing, but it's really what happened. So I go to the call back. My father takes me. I go with my manager. It is literally like a New York callback, how you would see it in a movie. I go backstage to where Miss Saigon is playing, and no one is there. And I go in, and I, I'm sweating even thinking about it. Yeah. I go in, <laughs> and at the time... If anybody remembers who Nia Peoples is, she was on a oh, show called yes. Fame. Yes. And I watched Fame religiously. So I knew, I don't know how I found out it was Nia Peoples, but I knew Nia Peoples was before me. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting this. That Nia Peoples is in there. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, you just have to go in there. You just have to sing. So then out comes this guy. And I see him, I'm like, oh my God, he's gorgeous. You know, I'm like, who is that? You know, and he's doing his thing. He's like warming up. And I, again, I'm shy, but in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my gosh. 
So it's my turn to go in. I go in to onto the stage and it's just like that thing when you literally look out and it's just bright light shining mm -hmm. in your eyes and there's yes. five people sitting there in the theater and that's it. And I literally walk out and I sing my song and one of the songs from Saigon are like, okay, Jenny, um, we're gonna bring in, um, his name is Jared. We're gonna bring in Jared and you're gonna sing uh, a duet together. And I was like, oh, okay. So we sing this song. Were you sweating then too? <laughs> I wasn't sweating, but what happens is I just start bawling the whole time, just crying, crying through the, who could understand what I was even saying? I was just crying the whole time. I was like, great, here I am. I'm just like this blubbery mess. I, that doesn't normally happen, but I guess I was just so emotional about what I was singing, you know? Yeah. So then someone calls me over. And they're like, Jenny, can you can you sing these scales? So I was like, okay. Yeah. You know, like singing these scales. I, I was just like, oh my gosh. So I sing these scales and they're like, okay, that's it. So it was the creators of the show, same creators, Alain Blue Bill, and I can never say their names correctly, but the people who created Les Mis, created mm -hmm. Miss Saigon, mm -hmm. whatever. So that's who I was singing for. And so I go back to my hotel room. I'm like, well, that was great. I'm just like blubbering through the whole thing. Next thing you know, I get a phone call and it was Vinny Lip who was a rest in peace, Vinny, but he was a very famous Broadway casting director. Yes. He calls me, he's like, oh, so Jenny, you're Kim. And I was like, okay, thank you. And I hang up the phone and my manager calls him back. She's like, Vinny, 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 no, she's excited. She's excited. She's just, she's so excited. So thank you. And so that night I, I, I just went to the theater because they wanted me to watch the show already. And I was just sitting there kind of in awe of like, uh oh, this is what I'm going to be doing. Like, it wow. was surreal. It was surreal. That's so I was, cool. Huh? I was barely 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what an opportunity so Absolutely. early on in major production, Absolutely. beloved, so, you know, yeah. revered. Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, people know you too for this fun series, <laughs> Dreams on NBC, oh. which ran five years. And then, because five, for people that don't know about the television industry, five years is the magic number. You hit five years, yep. and then you can go into syndication, syndication. or yep. people know it maybe as reruns, yep. but syndication where it can air on all these different stations, different times. And uh, you get a little white envelope in your mailbox, which helps. Uh, That's right. That's <laughs> right. For bills and That's car payments right. and things. Exactly. How did this come about for you? California so, groups? yes. So, Jim, so that was really funny. I had auditioned for Dreams. Let me think of the timing. Um, right around the time I had auditioned for Saigon. Yeah. And the, the thing about... If, if people don't know, California Dreams was in the same family as Saved by the Bell. Peter Engel, who is a genius for creating a lot of uh, shows in the 90s about young people and in a very lighthearted way, family, um, a family show. But we are not a spinoff of Saved by the Bell, but we are in the same family. But our show had music. So we literally were a band who was signed to um, a record label called MCA. And so much of the audition process was half of our auditions were for the, the part, right? So originally I had gone out for the part of Tiffany Smith, who the beautiful blonde is my best friend, Kelly Packard. And um, my Kelly, myself, and another friend of ours, um, Alitza, we auditioned for Tiffany Smith, who is one of the main series regulars of the show. The call was for a typical California girl, you know, at the beach. And that's basically how I grew up. I mean, I was at the beach every weekend, thus, you know, some brown spots here. But yes, so I'm that girl <laughs> born and raised in California, in L.A., in this, you know, crazy L.A. bubble. But um, so half of the auditions were four sides, what they call sides from, yeah, that's right. you know, from the script. And then half of them were in the studio. And um, a man by the name of Steve Tyrell, who is actually now known for being a very painter yeah, vocalist and, absolutely yes. absolutely um you bump he into him love to have him as a guest too oh he's great yeah. steve would have lots of stories for you jim lots of stories but um so steve was our music producer at the time so anyway we go in it's down to three girls myself kelly and Alitza for the role of tiffany smith and all of us different 
but all raised in LA and California raised the same way, you know? So anyway, I didn't get the part. And I call my friend Kelly, we had met at the audition and I was like, Hey, congratulations. You know, like, of course, you know, there's no hard feelings, but I hope our paths cross again. Literally, I'm probably halfway through my contract for Saigon. I get a call from Peter and he says, Jenny, do you remember me? I'm Peter. And I was like, hi, Peter. He said, uh, I want you to come home and do a TV show. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, he's like, I hope it works because I'm riding on this, you know? So I was like, okay. Literally my contract ended. I fly home. I get home. I have one day off, which was a Sunday, just lay in bed for the whole day. Next day I'm in the studio with Steve for a week straight. And this is a time when uh, there was no pro tools. You recorded everything on the track. And so if there were any sour notes, you go back, you go back and do it again. So for a week straight, I was in that studio for 12 hours a day just wow. because there were so many songs that they needed my characters to sing. So sing, yeah. looking back at it, you know, it, of course, would I have loved to, you know, sing certain things differently? Because when I listened back, I was like, oh, you know, but under the circumstances, you know, they needed all those things done. And you know, I did what I had to do. So, yeah. yeah. So, and when, we, when we were recording on the show, everything is back to pre-tape, you know, and, and even though I was singing it, I sang it before so we could use it for the show. Right. So, mm -hmm. Very Cause that would have cool. taken much longer if we would have been singing live on the show, even though I was used to it, but still right. that's how TV and film work. Do you guys uh, stay connected? Do you check in with each other? Some of the other oh, cast yeah. members? Yes, definitely. So I literally, the other day, I uh, was hoping to get together with Kelly, but you know, our lives are so crazy busy. So yeah. I'm actually leaving to travel again. So I said, when I get back, Michael, who played Sly, he has a gorgeous baby girl. And so now he's a daddy. Mm. He is, yeah, that's occupying his time. William, who uh, played Tony Wicks, is an amazing amazing uh family counselor psychologist and has a beautiful practice that he has built and is just so full with that so when the four of us can get together we we try to um jay lives in australia and i've been in contact with him we just recently had an anniversary for the show and um a couple of, of fans may know in a, a few years ago kelly and i produced a live um concert that we put on and we were really surprised how how well it went and uh so who knows maybe something in the future maybe a, you know i don't know a con coming to your town we'll see or That's something else right exactly we'll uh, also beverly hills 90210 you had an opportunity to be that on. was one of my first gigs even before miss saigon yeah and that was a funny experience because it was one of my first TV experiences. Mm -hmm. And again, I was so shy. I remember Jason Priestley was like, do you ever talk? I'm like, only when <laughs> I have to. And then it was so embarrassing. But I was in my dressing room and all I hear is this, Jenny, Jenny. And Luke Perry peeks his head and he's like, I'm like, oh, I guess you're looking for the other Jenny. He's like, it's okay. Nice to meet you. He was so sweet. So yeah, yeah that was one of my first experiences and it was wonderful. It was what great. a great was, first experience to be on a hit show like that. You know, I hadn't even watched the show prior to me being on it. So then I watched it after I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, mm -hmm. you didn't start in just toothpaste commercials. You <laughs> went right for the big, the big ones. <laughs> I guess so. I guess Which so. is like, <laughs> I know. Even the nanny with Fran Drescher, which I mentioned in the, oh, yeah. the start of the show. What was it like working, uh, you know, with her? That oh, a I heck of a lot of fun. Loved her. Yeah. Here's the thing that was that experience taught me what it was like to be a businesswoman. Yeah. Because first of all, just Fran Drescher. I again, it's funny. It's I didn't watch all these shows, but after I was on them, I was like, oh, now I got to watch it. But in person. Her skin was like flawless. And I just, I felt like I just kept staring at her. <laughs> but the the important thing was I saw how she ran that set. Yeah. I saw what it took. Very um, involved, hands-on. Very hands-on. And our director, oh gosh, I, I'm, I'm blanking right now, but she played Naomi on Mama's Family. 
Oh and, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm. I'm blanking. I, I'm Vicky sorry. Lawrence and Ken Berry and right, yeah. right, right. And so she was a director, and just to see the powerhouse of these women working together was such an inspiration. I thought, I want to be like that one day. Mm-hmm. I want to get to the point where I can do the creative side and also know what I'm talking about as far as how to put shows together. And so. Yeah, I'm. I'm still Dorothy Lyman. That's correct. I Dorothy Lyman. You. Yes, that's right. Oh, she is fabulous sure. too, as Naomi yes. on Mama's Family. That's um, right. So yeah, it was. She went was, on to soap operas too. Uh, Another World as Gwen, mm-hmm. and yeah, a lot of cool things. Yeah, so I just learned so much uh, about just what the it business takes to and, produce. Yeah. And these are great opportunities too, because you got a chance to work with these veteran performers and producers that. and directors and sort of had the opportunity to soak it in to see how it actually all comes together, as opposed to just focusing on the lines on paper. You were keen, like I've always been, keen mm-hmm. on everything else that's going on around you and soaking that all up to realize it takes a village to put all these kinds of Absolutely. things together, right? And I think a lot of people don't realize that. They don't do that, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's so crucially important to understand it all. Avenue Q. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that yeah. happen too? Again, another, you know, Gosh. fabulous production. Yes. And uh, wow, Avenue Q. I had gotten a call to audition to cover some tracks. Uh there's a character by the name of Christmas Eve who actually one of my best friends played and I covered that track. And uh, at the time they were trying to do, Avenue Q had already been on Broadway and they wanted to experiment to bring Broadway to Las Vegas. Well, we all know what Vegas is like. It's a whole other world, right? It's a whole other world. But we opened the show as a two hour show in like it's normal uh, existence, but we had two casts. Mm-hmm. There was a blue bear and a yellow bear cast. Anyway, because it's Vegas and bless Vegas, you know, it's, it's Vegas. So it's Vegas. The, the attention span is different. They're yeah. not used. Maybe some people haven't been to theater, but they were trying to bring theater to Nevada in right. this sort it's of like, new form. Where's the action? Where's the exactly. action? Exactly. <laughs> so we had to shorten the show to a 90 minute show, which was fine. Uh, and then we closed after, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe under a year. But then I got the call to go again on tour. And mm-hmm. so I got to be with the show for almost two years and also learned so many things. Some of my best friends are still from the show. I just because when you spend so much time together, you're lucky if you like each other by the end of your run. Right. But again, I still have some of the best friends from that show. And I learned how to puppeteer. Um, it's cool. Which is amazing. So now I can say I can puppeteer. Am I John Tartaglia? I'm not Johnny, but I can definitely do it. And it also kind of lended to doing the different voices. But that show is also such a great show and so clever. And Bobby, you know, Bobby Lopez wrote the show with Jeff Marks and Robert Lopez, who wrote Frozen. Yes. So people might know him from that. But he started with Avenue Q. That was one of his beginning shows. I don't want to say beginning because I know he's done other stuff, but people might know him from Avenue Q. And, mm-hmm. and I then, saw it in New York. It was fabulous. Yeah, there. it's a fun show. It's a fun show. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that show. And of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention this character. Oh, Tell us who we have here. <laughs> that is Suki. She yeah. is everyone's favorite Kyoshi warrior. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is... I will say she is a Kyoshi warrior. She can stand on her own, but a lot of people know her as Sokka as his love interest also toward the end. And so, um, and maybe more, we don't know. People ask me all the time, what do you think happened to Suki after the show ended? And I have my own theories, but, um, but yeah, so that's an interesting story because a lot of the times for voiceover, you audition for a part or just like any part. You know, I had a call to audition for this guest spot, go to my agents at the time and I lay the audition down. They send it. I get a call back and I said, great. 
I show up at Nickelodeon, I see a couple friends, but if anybody has ever seen the inside of Nickelodeon studios, even in pictures or in mm -hmm. videos, it literally looks like a rainbow inside. It's, it's very, very, it's, it's beautiful yeah. and crazy and fun yeah. and energetic. And uh, yes, the closest I think I came to mm -hmm. something similar was I had an opportunity to go to lunch with a friend who invited me to go inside mm -hmm. Facebook and Facebook similar. I mean, it's just like a, it's I like a, it's like a Disney situation mm -hmm. constantly. And that's right. where they work right? <laughs> on yes. skateboards with laptops. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it was a really fun experience. I go into the booth, the creators are there. And uh, next thing you know, I'm, I'm, re I'm recording for Suki. And with that, I had seen an illustration. I should find my paper with that, but a rough drawing of what Suki might look like. Uh, but at the time I was just recording on my own and I didn't know I was going to come back, but I guess the fans loved her so much. The creators, um, wrote her in more. And by the end of the show, she became kind of like a re what they would call a reoccurring character. So I'm so grateful to just be oh, able to have that yeah. opportunity to be a part of such a legendary show that people really love and, just adore and people just to this day, you know, when I'm out, you know, doing the conventions, they just, yeah. they're so complimentary. I'm like, I literally just, <laughs> you know, moist her, but yeah. I'm just so They're grateful. very close to the character. And that's what happens. Yeah. You know, they get close mm -hmm. to these various characters yeah. and whether they're animated or, you know, on screen, there Absolutely. you are or on stage, there it's these, I mean, look at people still, including me, I love Dick Van Dyke and Absolutely. Barbara Eden, Jean, That's and right. all of these, you know, iconic figures. And it's just, they, they really uh, personified the character. How much of Suki is Jenny and how much of Jenny is Suki? People ask me that all the time. My friend would say we were cast literally because we were like our characters. Now, I always say, I would be very lucky if I could be like Suki. Suki is a young woman who, oh gosh, it makes me a little bit teary, but Suki definitely is a young person who wants to be of service and is always doing her best to help people, advance community, uh, be a part of the bigger picture in a positive way. She is, she stands on her own and really fights the cause. She really walks a walk and talks a talk. That is who this character is. Am I exactly like that? <laughs> I would like to be. I try to be. I, I do consider myself a person who is of service. I want to be like that. And um, hopefully I'm making an impact on people's lives. And that's why I continue to act and I don't give up because my hope is that no matter it be good or bad or just having any sort of effect, I hope that that's what I can leave, you know, here when I'm gone, that people will be like, oh, yeah, you know. So that's my I hope. I think you're doing that. I think you are definitely <laughs> doing that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Anger management. <laughs> what a step Charlie huh? Sheen. Yeah. You, huh? That was fun. It yeah, really was. To be a part of that, too, huh? Kind of cool. Yes, so Charlie Sheen, uh, he actually was the star of that show, and um, he was actually quite the delight. My scene was with him. I had a very short, brief scene with him, but very professional, came and did his job, was funny. Uh, sometimes what happens on set is if certain lines aren't working, the writers will change them on the spot. Literally, I think I probably had two lines, three lines. And by the time I was done, they had rewritten my lines probably three or four times. And that happens a lot. But yeah. oh, it ended yeah. up being fine because, you know, I'm used to it. But it, it was such a fun sort of atmosphere to be around and to see Charlie in such a good light. Yeah. I, I'm really appreciative of that. Absolutely. Which yeah. is fantastic. And all of these experiences are extraordinary. Yeah. Worst cooks in America. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. Would you burn a meatloaf or something? Or? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. So Food Network had reached out 
trying to find me. They called my agent and I get this very strange call. Jenny, um, do you know how to cook? And I said, <laughs> uh, yes, I guess. I don't know why. They're like, well, Food Network is calling. They want to see if you'd be interested in doing uh, a TV show. I said, oh, which one? <laughs> They're like worst cooks of America, ninety celebrity edition. I was like, what? And then you thought it was, was chopped like, or exactly. one of these like, others, no right? Way. I was like, no. but, but still, I, I literally, when they said that, uh, I started sweating. I was like, oh gosh, what, a lot of sweating in this it? industry, yeah, folks. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. Now I can fake a lot of things. Sure. Cooking, I'm a insecure about because just even in real life, like if I'm cooking by myself, that's fine. I don't want anybody to watch me. I don't, I, I, I'm very exact, but I'm still, even the other day, I still messed up on something. But to think about having people watch you cook and it's something you're not good at, like, Think of your worst nightmare of like, some people don't like to speak in public. Some people don't like to sing. So cooking. No, it's not, not for uh, me. So it, it was very interesting, that whole process. And I will let everybody know we were not faking it at all. We were in that kitchen 14 to 19 hours a day. Wow. We weren't on the beach drinking beer or having a cocktail <laughs> and like you were someone chooses us, working your you know? tails off yeah oh, huh? absolutely absolutely and and our group of of people we all really wanted to do well that's mm. the thing we all yeah. and the producers after the first episode when no one got eliminated they were like we've never seen people so happy that no one has been eliminated been eliminated so, <laughs> we really enjoyed each other's company and we really were working. I, I say we, because yeah. I saw for myself, we Everybody. were working our tails off. Like you said, it exactly on very little sleep. I mean, our call yeah. times would be five in the morning, six in the morning. We wouldn't be leaving until nine or 10. The longest day was when I got there probably around eight or nine and we didn't leave until two in the morning, mm -hmm. just constantly working. Just That's yeah. So that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I tell you. How about Street Fighter Six too? Oh huh? yes. So I know you're excited about that. <laughs> I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that people are not going to know. And we have a graphic for that. It's I a JMS it. exclusive. Oh, that's so cool, <laughs> Janelle. I tell you, huh? That's fun. <laughs> when I was about 18 or 19 years old. I had auditioned for this game that they said, okay, this is going to be a sample, Jenny. And it was called Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. So I went to, I, I went to Laurel Canyon. I remember it was in someone's uh, home studio, which there are a lot of anyway. Uh, but I recorded Chun-Li when I was mm -hmm. 18 or 19 and it was just a sample. And so they're like, okay, thanks. And I said, oh, well, I hope I get that game. It seems pretty cool. It's, it would have been the first video game I would do. Cut to the beginning of pandemic, I auditioned for Street Fighter. And I was cast as Chun-Li. And at the time, I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying all this, but at the time we'd, we'd recorded as a group for a certain thing for Street Fighter and it didn't go. And then uh, they said, okay, but we are going to move forward with the game. And so... I came back to record the demo tracks. This is what they do a lot of the times for games, for the demo tracks, and then they send it overseas to be what's called motion captured. So all the activities of the different characters, in this case, you know, they're fighting. So uh, live actors come in with sensors and they do all the action. And then after I recorded all the demo, then after they mo capped everything, I came back and redid everything. So I've been working on it for a few years and I've just been able to announce it. And I thought that it came out. That's how much I know, but it is coming out in uh, 2023. But I'm allowed to talk about it. Yes, yeah, we you. appreciate your sharing that on our yeah, show. You also yeah. do a lot of the uh, the cons, right? You're always making the appearances. And that's, I that's have been. You. Yeah. I have been. I've been so fortunate. And when you said Barbara Eden, I was like, oh, I'm going to meet her next month, I hope. 
Uh, because you have I the had genie a- bottle right there. See it? Hello. There it is. I was Barbara. Well, I say I was Barbara Eden. I was genie one year for Halloween, and it was my friend had made me the costume, and it was so amazing. I want to show Barbara Eden. I hope she oh, has yeah. some energy to talk to me because it's a lot when you are at cons. I believe she's like 90 or so. I cannot that believe. That is amazing. That's it's just- so inspiring. Yes. So yeah. I'm excited. I hope I get to see her. But yes, I've been so fortunate because of Avatar, uh, because of its resurgence. And I have what's called a Funko Pop, which I don't know if you could see in this array of toys here in my office. Yes, tell us about this room you're in. It's cool. Oh, boy. Oh, this is the office slash guest room with different sort of collectibles. Not all mine, but my little bit is, I don't know where she is right now. Oh, there's a Suki Pop at the very top shelf. Um, and then we have some chun but Funko Pops are collectible dolls uh, that have value when the people who have acted the, as the characters or voiced the characters, when their signatures are on there because they become collector's items. So I am so fortunate to have been able to voice Suki that Suki has one of her own. And then there's chun she has her own pops, but one of my booking agents got those for me to bring to cons once Street Fighter comes out. So I've, I'm really excited about that when that happens. But yeah, so that's because so of, cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. And the other things are those are my husband's all the Michael Myers masks and everything. People get scared mm-hmm. to come in here. We'll turn those around when people come. <laughs> so like I can't sleep. Oh my god! Halloween so, is right around the corner, right? Which is my favorite <laughs> holiday. After mm. this, I'm going to go around the neighborhood and do little pictures of my favorite things since I haven't had a chance. But oh, yeah, so I've been very blessed. Like you, Jim, I, I've been traveling for yeah. the past couple of years to different cities and uh, it's a lot. So coming it up is. in the next couple of months, I will be in Indianapolis, Dallas, Chicago, Vegas, and one more other place. I think, oh, LA here. So it's been a lot of travel, but it's been so rewarding just to meet everybody. I, I just Absolutely. can't tell you. I can't yeah. tell you it's how heartwarming very it touching, is. touching, isn't it? When you sometimes you don't realize uh, whose lives you're touching until they Absolutely. come up to you at yes. a supermarket or whatever at an event. Absolutely. And they, they, sometimes they're even afraid to come up, but they sort of inch their way in. They're like, oh, I just have to tell you yeah. I love doing this or how much you know your personality inspires me or oh, makes me yeah. feel good. And we're blessed to have those types of yes. moments and they're special. And you know, you're talking about all the travel and you and I basically have been lately literally uh, – Traveling around the sun. Yeah. And what a segue, yeah. huh? A Mr. Segway. Mr. That Lovety and Mr. Segway. Oh, no, Mr. Lovety. Yeah. Now look at the incredible, you know, cast and everybody involved in I this. I can't believe it. We've celebrated around the sun uh season one. Now it's very exciting that season two is happening. You know, anytime you get past season one of anything, you anything. Get to season two, wow. you're getting over that around the sun hump mm. in this business and somebody that is near and dear to us on our show, who has been with us, big fan support of our show and good friend of yours as well. Brad Ferenza is here. Oh, creator of our Hi, Jim. Hi, Jenny. There's our special surprise these. guest gang. Brad is back for a return visit here on the Jim Master Show Live. How are you, Brad? I'm doing awesome. And a whole worldwide web full of people are saying, who the heck is Brad Ferenza? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm honored to be here. So thank you, Jim, for inviting oh, me back. My pleasure. And congratulations on season two. That is a big, big, big accomplishment. We were here yes. spreading season one with you. Yes. So tell us, uh, Brad, how did uh, Jenny come into the mix and all the other incredible cast members that you've assembled? Awesome. Well, thank you, Jenny, for saying Aww. yes. I've been familiar with Jenny's work for a good chunk of my life. Aww. And it was an honor to work with Jenny. Jenny has just such a wonderful glass half full optimism and innocence in her voice that I've been familiar with for quite some time. And she graciously agreed to portray two parts, as did the vast majority of stars in Around the Sun season two. So we're functioning as- Jenny is the con artist. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> write, write that down you can use that I'm in going, branding i'm going to get some instant branding for you a quant Thanks. <laughs> we're functioning as a full-on ensemble this year so jenny is playing two unique characters in two unique episodes starring opposite caroline aaron in one of them and starring opposite one of your former guests jim richard klein in another from Three's Company and so much yeah. more, of course. Yeah. Huh? And like Jenny, someone well known for his the for, for his TV work, but also a theater stalwart. Yes. Always on the boards. Yes. You've had an opportunity to have so many incredible people uh, that are a part of this. How did you, what is it like assembling all of these people? It is like a dream come true. It's like a graduated cameo experience. It's mm. like my heart pangs every single time I go to production on one of these episodes. And the fact that season two does function as an ensemble is really cool because the characters as brought to life by Jenny and others, it's just threaded throughout the season. And Jim, we're launching season two on Wednesday, the first three episodes drop wherever you listen to podcasts on Wednesday. And among those three episodes is the one starring Ms. Jenny Kwan and Ms. Caroline Aaron, known for many, many things, but most recently, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Tell us about Around the Sun for folks who maybe didn't get a chance to catch season one, what it's about, what to expect. So Around the Sun is comprised of self-contained episodes, scripted episodes. So it's not an interview oriented podcast. It's a fictional podcast and the episodes can be enjoyed as one-offs or all together as a collective. And season two, we're in the desert with some existential desert themes of human connections made and missed people coming together or just missing the opportunity, the missed connection, as Craigslist might term it. And season one was similar. However, all of our episodes were centered in New York City, where I'm from. And our wonderful ensemble from season one, more or less, they did one episode each, as opposed to the stars that everyone loves being threaded throughout the season. Wow, that's so cool. You know, I know I this is... It. This has been truly a uh, a real labor of love for you, hasn't it been, Brad? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's wonderful to see one's work come to life, which I'm not new to, but I'm I'm new to the visibility that mm -hmm. this project is getting. And again, I thank you, Jim, and I thank Jenny and thank you, Lisa and Suzanne, who are among the levities watching for helping to let this project live in the universe. Do you hope that it continues to season three, four, five? Is that- uh, Absolutely, I, I hope. And as the writer, producer, and I get to star in one of them, I get to star opposite Piper Laurie this time wow. around, which is pretty cool. Um, I would say so, yes. I do Take hope it moment, continues. Huh? It's just a lot of work and I'm not afraid of work. So it will continue for the time being. <laughs> What's it like behind the scenes? Tell us about the work, the rehearsals, the preparation for people watching might not understand what it really takes to do the kinds of things we all do. What is it like putting this together? It's a good, it's a good uh, composite of one's skill set. So writing is a very solitary, introverted act that takes months, if not years. And season two was written with the intention of producing these episodes as audio drama episodes. Whereas season one, everything was developed and produced as standalone theatrical pieces for the better part of 10 years. So that was a long time coming. Then the pandemic, I changed mediums and everything landed in this revived audio drama platform. And season two, I wrote everything with some haste, knowing that I wanted to launch season two a year after season one, but it still took the better part of a year to really get those episodes in a 
place where I felt they were shareable and shareable mm -hmm. with the mass public. Because once it's out there, you can't really redact it. And then production. Unless it's on Twitter, then you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not of that happening on Twitter. <laughs> so production is still a, a longer process, but not compared to writing. I imagine people who haven't produced might think that all the time gets sucked up by production. Production is, is more extroverted and it does take a lot of time and it is more technically oriented than one might think, but Ms. Mm -hmm. Kwan could probably speak better to that five years on California Dreams. Oh gosh. It, it's not the work, it's all the stairs. So right. production time is technical. How does it sound? Um, what's the cadence? And at the end of the day, post-production comes back to me, the producer, and editing is where I find kind of a, a different way of telling a story. Because you can affect things in post, you can affect a, por a performance in post mm -hmm. and affect the cadence and the sound and the narrative that you're, you're putting out there. And then sound gets added, a wonderful young man named Shane Curry as well as my friend Shane Bordeaux, both added some sound to the mix, which just ups the ante and the storytelling quality across the board. That's incredible. Jenny, how is it with all these incredible things that you've done and continue to do in your career, how is it for you being a part of this fantastic production, Around the Sun, season two? Well, I haven't even told Brad this, but I, oh, I feel wait, so- Wait, we've got another, la, la, da, 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 da. it's a JMS exclusive. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I I'm, I feel so grateful to be a part of this project. Brad yeah. was so gracious in having me. And the way the process worked, I felt so supported. And that that doesn't happen all the time, you know, with, right. with different productions. You come and you do your job. But I will share. It was so funny. Because of the pandemic and how we've had to work for VO in the last couple of years, it, we're starting to come back. But... I ha I'm very lucky because I have my own little booth at home. And so, but typically I'd been working by myself. And so when I logged on, there were other people. And I was like, oh, other people. And I, I was like, oh, I better, I better get my hair yeah, done. I better at least you know, go like this. But <laughs> I, I, first I, I was working with the fabulous Caroline Aaron. And I, all I knew was that she, the way she worked, I was thinking, wow, she literally is an actor who takes the time to really understand, which a lot of the time, sometimes that's not the case these days. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I get in these situations where I know that they're seasoned veterans, I just shut my mouth and I just try and learn, you know, and try and go with the, with the energy of, of what my partner's giving. And for actors who have been around a while, don't, you know, like right. just go with it. You're going to yes. learn more than try to up someone. And I, I, I typically don't even want to do that. But then what I didn't tell Brad was the second, the second story that I was involved with was with one of my favorite actors, of course, because I grew up on Three's Company that I was like, oh my gosh, I don't typically fangirl, but I was inside by myself. You know, he's like, oh my gosh. I... And Richard, Richard was such a oh, pro. Yeah. And again, I don't really fangirl out at, at, you know, today's stars, but the ones who have been around, who know what they're doing, who come from an old school background of really getting in there and digging in and doing the work, that's when I get excited. So to, I get chills because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here. Right. And they've had extensive backgrounds other than what people see on TV. They right. And you can tell when you work with them. Yeah. And so it was just such an honor to be in everyone's presence. And I just feel so excited about the project and what Brad wrote. It, they're really very contemporary, but very touching also. Very interesting stories. And to involve these actors it was just a really cool project to be a part of. What do you hope is the uh, takeaway for people when they see Around the Sun, Brad? What do I hope is the takeaway for 
people as they engage with this project that I'm so partial to and proud of. Right. Well, one of the threads of Around the Sun is kind of this premise that no one is alone. Mm -hmm. I'm not the first person to script that. But I do hope through the pieces that Jenny's in, through the pieces that others are in, there we are, I do hope that people can locate an experience that they might have gone through a time when they might have felt alone mm -hmm. uh, and, and hopefully you recognize that there's, it might not be an experience unique to the listener. Mm -hmm. It might be an experience that others can relate to and, and that can connect us. And Jim, if I could add one other thing, because Jenny was referencing Ms. Aaron and Mr. Klein as people she looks up to and admires their work. Jenny's in, in that same boat for me. And going back to your first question, Jim, about my experience as the, the writer producer, it's so surprising and humbling and beautiful, A, that people say yes to the project, that mm -hmm. they like the work, the writing speaks to them on some level, and they put their faith in me because they like the work. But also what Jenny said about learning from folks like Caroline and Richard, I feel like all of these people, Jenny included, are just so open to learning from each other. Mm -hmm. I would never think that the three of them would look to me to learn something from. I would think that I have everything to gain from being in their presence. But the art of creating, as you know, is a very collaborative one. And to a person in both seasons of Around the Sun and in other films and theatrical projects that I've, I've created, there's an openness to mm -hmm. the creative spirit. There's a way in which artists see the world that uh, I, I, I think is pretty open and vulnerable and less guarded than one might think. You know, somebody that knew that well, and you've seen him pop up on our show and, and Jenny's been, you know, paying homage to these legendary people as Mr. George Burns. Oh. <laughs> and there oh. he is. And he knew how he, he knew about tenacity and stamina mm. and forging forward. He always pops in towards the latter part. <laughs> and uh, He's got a cigar and he's got his red pocket square. And this was my aunt's, one of my aunts and got passed down to me. So uh, he said, you guys knock this out of the park. I know you have to take off. There's a lot of things going on because it's, you know, coming up on Wednesday, but he said, you guys knocked it out of the park. He wishes Aww. you continued uh, success with around the sun and everything else that you guys are doing individually. And uh, he sends love from Gracie too. <laughs> George Burns, he played God in the movies. Hey, you got God on your side. We have God on the show. I, I can't I mean, top that, huh? You can't at all. <laughs> it's no true. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you devil. <laughs> oh God, you devil. There he is, George Burns in the house and Jeannie back over there I and the cast it. of characters. You guys are great. And uh, again, if people want to uh, find out about Around the Sun season two, where do they go again? And I know they can go to uh, the website, but like you say, all of the uh, usual places where people can uh, stream yep. and things like that. Wherever they listen to podcasts, we're presented by the Broadway Podcast Network. But if for some reason, wherever one listens to podcasts doesn't have Around the Sun, they'll have it. You can go to <laughs> aroundthesunpodcast.com. Yeah, there you go. Good stuff. Brad, it's always great to see you here on the show and we'll uh, you know, welcome you back anytime. And in any of the other folks you have that want to pop on the show, spread the word. They're all welcome. And Jenny, you were a delight, a lot of Aww. fun to have on the show. And Thank you for having me, Jim. And thank you for writing pleasure. this, Brad. Thank you. Thank really, you, really a pleasure to have both of you and uh, continued success, Brad. And for you as well, Jenny, really thank a pleasure. You. You're welcome thank back you. on the Gym Master Show series you know, anytime. You. I don't want to steal the final punch. It's your show, Jim. But I got to see Ms. Jenny Kwan in Avenue Q. That's ah! something I never shared with Jenny. Oh, really? Oh, God. Yes. That's so Thanks, cute and, and so incredible. Course, wow, huh? 
Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't part without saying that because ah. I didn't get to share that with Jenny. No, you slipped, you slipped it in. It's all part yeah. of the Q score. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. High five, guys. This was awesome. Boom. I hope you get some rest, Jim, for just like two, two little winks <sighs> before you go on to the next. I tell you, it's been a whirlwind. Continues to be, but we love it, don't we, we Jenny it. and Brad? Yeah. We love what we do. We're Absolutely. blessed. We're very lucky. We are blessed. Yeah. Uh, Brad, you've been here before. You're welcome back anytime. Jenny, this is your first time. I hope you enjoyed the time with us, with us as much as we have with you. And um, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had. Oh, yeah. Exceeded. And thank you. <laughs> Jim yes, and Jenny, and Jenny you. and Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Spread guys. the word about the Gym Master Show live. We love you guys and congratulations on all continued blessings and joy. And uh, thanks for joining us here on the show and everybody, you know, thanks, they're, lovely, they're, fun. they're all commenting, mm -hmm. welcome and loved having you on the show. Oh, so and sweet. thanks for being here and all the usual. We love the loveities. Guys, take care. I know you got to scoot out quick, but a real pleasure. And we'll see you guys uh, again soon. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Congratulations. High five, High five and congratulations on season two. Yes, two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you. Thanks, Brad. Jenny, thank you. You're thank welcome you. back anytime. You're oh, awesome. You're awesome, Jim. Take, Take care. care now. Bye. Bye, Bye. All right. Yes, Jenny Kwan joining us and Brad Forenza, our special surprise guest, of course, creator of Around the Sun Season 2. You might remember he was a guest on our series and um, he talked about Season 1. Uh, he's a big, big fan of our show. We really appreciate that. There is, of course, look at the folks that are in Season 2. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I tell you, when something rolls and it's popular and people love it and they connect with it, like he was saying, it's all about the... Uh, relatability you know you might find essences of the characters in yourself that you can identify with and if you want to learn more go to around the sun podcast.com that's right really exciting and again uh just in a day or so everything is launching and taking off really really cool let's take a look at some of the comments coming in here sherry larson's watching in kansas one of our regular lovety squad members thank you jim it's great to have you back we appreciate you heart 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 we love you too as well good to see you there in kansas sherry some more comments coming in uh merlin in canada says Jenny and Brad, it was lovely to have had you on Jim's show. Jenny's a new lovety. Yes, she is a lovety for sure. She loved that word when I was telling her lovety uh, when we were chatting. We do a little pre-chat before the show goes live. Kathleen Walker watching in New York City. Thank you for being here, Jenny and Brad. Great show. I agree. I second that emotion, Kathleen. Sherry Larson uh, adds, thank you, uh, Jenny, for being here tonight. What a wonderful career you've had and so much more ahead for you. Thank you for... Uh, Popping in Brad. Absolutely. We knew Brad was going to be here, but we wanted to surprise everybody. And he had to scoot off because they're getting ready for the show coming up uh, Wednesday. Jenny, you've had such a great success in your life, yet remain so humble. I really respect you for that. I wish you continued success and your star shines brighter and brighter. Absolutely. Uh, Maureen in Arizona. She also says, what a fun surprise to have Brad drop in. Yes, stopping by the Gym Master Show Live series. And really, really cool. Joan is here and Joan says, Jim, thanks for all you do. You're the best. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. We love it. And um, yeah, thanks everybody for all these great comments. Thank you, Jim. Great. We appreciate you. We appreciate you guys as well. Thanks for all the great comments. You're amazing. I want to let you know that tomorrow we've got somebody extraordinary. We have the world's foremost Sherlock Holmes, Dracula, and Frankenstein expert. This is going to be extraordinary. Tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Live. Leslie S. Klinger is going to be with us. Extraordinary conversation. Then also coming up, author, writer, educator, and mom, Meyer Payne Smart is with us as well. And she's in a big campaign to get kids to be literate, to read. And she's extraordinary. And of course, recently, my wonderful friend, you know, Marie Nesbitt from Celtic Woman and Celtic Spells, the Broadway show Rocktopia, and so much more. Uh, Grammy and Emmy nominated Celtic violinist was with us this past weekend. If you didn't see that episode, that's available on our YouTube channel as well. 
Loretta Switt stopped by recently, legendary actress, artist, author. We did a phenomenal, epic conversation. Also, animal welfare activist. MASH is celebrating 50 years. It's hard to believe some of this. Barbara Eden's like in her early 90s. Loretta Switt was with us. Loretta Switt celebrating MASH 50 years. Norman Lear is 100 years old. Life moves in a New York Minute gang, so you got to live every moment and celebrate every moment. Around the Sun celebrating second season. Uh, we thank Brad and Jenny for popping by the Gym Masters show series. It was really cool. And you guys uh, that are fans of Jenny got a chance to hear a little bit more about her passions and what she loves to do and what drives her and uh, some of the cool projects that she's worked on and is continuing to work on. We appreciate Jenny. We'll have her back. I know you guys love when the guests come back. We always keep the door uh, open for everybody. So that's uh, that's the wrap to this episode, gang. I see lots of smarts and happy smiles and hearts and all kinds of cool stuff. You guys are fantastic. Uh, if you want to binge watch the episode, there are close to 900 we have done so far of the Gym Master Show Live series. Don't forget, you can also, we would love it if you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Leave a comment on the channel under the episodes. That helps us. And click that big thumbs up sign, the up sign. We love that. That lets us know that you enjoy what we're doing here at the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. Also helps us get the word out about the show because it helps the YouTube algorithm. Yes, when you click like and when you comment and when you subscribe, more people get to see all these shows that you enjoy. So don't keep it secret. Like, comment, subscribe. We love that. This is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. We absolutely love having you guys here on the show. We loved having Jenny Kwan with us. You may remember, again, so many great shows she's been in and um, great series, film, television stage. And of course, Brad Forenza from Around the Sun and so much more. A uh, terrific guy and very creative. And it was a pleasure to have him here. So uh, binge watch all the episodes. There's many to enjoy. Stick with us. We have many more great guests, surprises, all kinds of cool things coming up for the holidays and lots more happening here at your place. Your place. That is the Gym Master Show Live. It's your place. This is Lovety Hall designed for all y'all. Oh, I just created something. So, you know, if I was down south, I could say that. Lovety Hall is created for y'all. <laughs> Each and every one of you watching from all around the world, international audience here, uh, morning, noon, and night, no matter what time of day it is, you're always welcome to join us live or Memorex, meaning uh, Memorex, you remember the cassette tape Memorex uh, recorded. Um, we don't say goodbye around here. We say see you later. Ciao, cheers, shalom, hasta la vista, avida zain, sayonara, slancha, moi loop, take care, be well, be good to one another, take care of one another, love one another, and of course, don't forget to love yourself. Um, a great, great show today with uh, Jenny Kwan and Brad Forenza joining us. Uh, a lot of laughs, good times. Thank you for another great show. You work hard for us, and we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We got a lot of TV shoots coming up in the studio this week. I have a lot of radio shows to host and um, just a lot of cool things that are happening. And uh, yeah, nature of the business. Thank you, Kathleen. Maureen says, uh, so glad you're back, Jim. Looks like your trip was a huge success and uh, pretty amazing food. Oh yeah, when we were in Fort Lauderdale on the shoot, it was extraordinary. And tried to, on social media, show you guys clips and videos. Uh, there's so many more. We couldn't post them all because we were so busy doing the work. <laughs> but uh, especially when I was in Earrington, Nevada, and riding the horse, we went horseback riding and so much more. It's part of a TV uh, shoot project and stay tuned on all that. And we were in Reno, we were in Denver, we were in Las Vegas, we were in Chico, California, we were in Sacramento, uh, Boca, other parts of Florida. Last night I was in New York City, we had an amazing dinner. We'll post some of those photos on social media at um, Parkside Restaurant, amazing Italian dinner. And then I was, um, on a TV shoot last night in New York City. Uh, so yeah, busy stuff, but we love it. Scream Queen Army. Chris is here watching from Ireland. 
Hey, Chris, it's always great when you're here. I know it's late for you there in the beautiful Emerald Isle, but always great when you're here. Take care, Jim and Lovities. You as well. You as well. And Sherry Larson's in the house from Kansas as she's been commenting throughout the show. Good night, all. Have a fabulous Tuesday. Love and hugs. We will and you do as well. Um, again, some of the lovely is coming in here and, um, Brad and uh, Jenny, uh, had posted privately, you know, we talk privately in, we have our own little private chat room as well. And they loved being on the show with all of us. So cool stuff. Really great. We have a good time here at the show, right? We don't call these interviews. We call these conversations on the Jim Masters Show live series. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That really, really, truly helps us. And for those of you who subscribe to our YouTube channel, we love you for doing that. Uh, leave a comment, click thumbs up, all the rest. Uh, to subscribe, you just hit that red button right there. Simple, easy, doesn't cost anything. There's no cost to subscribe. And it really helps your place, Lovety Hall, the Jim Masters Show, to thrive and grow. You know, uh, we've been doing this as of today, something like two and a half years and almost 900 shows. That's a lot. That's a lot of output, a lot of content creation. And we love doing it. We love it. Merlin in Canada checking in. You as well, Merlin. Thanks for being here. And everybody checking in to Lovety Hall today. Those of you watching and commenting and those of you who watch quietly and you don't necessarily comment in the chat room, but you also leave comments on a YouTube channel. We thank you for that. So you guys be well, take care. We will be back. Uh, if you're uh, not watching this live, stay right here. There's another episode coming up. If you're watching live, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be here on the Jim Master Show live series. Love you all. Take care and be well. George Burns, Jeannie, and all the rest of the cast characters. We say take care and be well, and we'll see you on the next one. All right. Cheers. <laughs>